Dust off your vibro blade and get your blaster rifles ready because it's time to take off with the Mythwits. The show dedicated to all things geek pop culture, drenched in absurdity and coated with sarcasm. Every week we bring you an industry guest to talk about the ever-expanding Geekoverse and to play games with us. We do our damnedest to be funny, but there are no guarantees. I'm your host, Peter Bryant, and joining me this week is my co-host, Mike Kafis. Did somebody say games? Yes, we did. And our guest this week is Terry Mixon. Hey there. Terry is a best is a number one best-selling military science fiction author who served as a non-commissioned officer in the United States Army, uh, 101st Airborne Division. Uh, he later worked alongside the flight controllers in the Mission Control Center at NASA, Johnson Space Center, supporting the space shuttle. He, like, held it up. I mean, like, that is, that's a G, man. It's like Atlas with the space... Shrugged. Uh, <laughs> shrugged, <laughs> yes. The International Space Station. Wow, that's heavy, too. And other human space, space, blah, 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 space flight projects. He now writes full-time while living in Texas with his lovely wife and a... Pounce, pounce of cats. Is that like the you know like a like a herd of deer and a it's a pounce of that's, cats? That's that... our word for it anyway. It's better oh. than a clouder. I don't like pounce. Or I don't, I don't like clouder. I'm gonna stick with pounce. Okay. All right. Very good. Very good. Um, that's like uh, I forget what the what was it for nerds? Was it a, was it a, uh, there were some mean ones like there was a uh, a stink of gamers or something like that, which I thought was kind of mean because I happen to be one of them gamers. But um, I, uh, I don't know. It hurts. Yes. Yeah. yeah it it, it it can be it can be true we've like, been to dragon I, con <laughs> i gotta tell you that good words aside i am living proof that you do not have to be a rocket scientist to work at nasa okay fantastic oh. well we've had uh we've had two nasa fellows on our show two two fellows two confirmed nasa people uh the first one was jack clemens which he's been on a couple times good buddy jack uh he was an engineer and he worked on uh he worked on the the software that went on the space shuttle uh he Not also worked on a, well he worked he worked on the uh uh the, the moon missions he Apollo. did and he also but yeah. he also yeah. worked on the space shuttle mike he helped write that software just yeah, saying. but he's, yeah. What? Mm-hmm. Yeah, what? <laughs> Go. <laughs> and we had, we also had Mike Mulane on astronaut Mike Mulane, who was, yes. uh, I think his first flight was on a Discovery, right? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, so he was he he was a great guest too. We talked about yeah, knocking fun. knocking pee off the shuttle, frozen pee. Blue, the, uh, right? Wasn't it blue? Blue pee. I don't know if it was, no. I think it was. I don't think they put dye. I don't think they need to put dye. No. In it. But, I think uh, that's the airline that you're thinking of blue. What's that? I think that's the airliners you're thinking of that turn it blue. Yeah, right, right. The blue, the blue falling bricks, right? Um, but yeah, okay. So Terry, so yeah, I didn't know. I had no idea until I was looking at your show notes that uh, that you have done some really cool stuff. So you lived. I, I'm guessing you lived down in Florida then. No, I live in Houston. Um, I am. I was working oh, at the Mission Control Center here at Johnson Space Center. That's right. There's that other one. There's the yeah. one that's not Florida. <laughs> Remember, Pete, Houston. Right. We have right. a problem. We have a problem. Not, right, I got gotcha. you. Not Florida. Right, I got gotcha. you. They always have we a actually, problem. Actually, do we? We have a NASA one here in Maryland. They they launch rockets out yeah. of fucking Maryland, or is it Virginia? Is it Virginia Terry or is it Maryland? Is it that island? It sounds out more there, like but... it would be Virginia. I, I don't really know. Um, I'm not sure. I know that they've got something over there. No, oh, there's Goddard. Really Goddard is is somewhere in that direction. Yeah. It's yeah. No, that's in that's in Baltimore. In I mean in Maryland in uh, Lanham, okay. I think. Right. Well, I know there's one. We can see rockets if if I go out on my back deck, and sometimes when they launch, they launch rockets to go up to the space shuttle, or wherever I don't know, wherever they go. Um, space. Uh, we, we, yeah, when they go into the they go into the space, we <laughs> I can see them from my back porch sometimes uh, taking off. You can see the little streak going up. It's pretty cool. Uh, Just remember, what goes up does come down, and if things go wrong, your porch might be a little close. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so well. Uh, t- one of the things that that uh, that Terry had told told us beforehand in his in his show notes, and I guess this about you, Terry, from reading your book. I'm reading Heart of Vengeance, almost done. I'm, I'm really close. Um, I was I'm, I'm, I'm so I'm reading the book. Now I'm doing it audiobook style. So uh, so I'm, I'm listening to the book, and I got through the first couple chapters, and uh, I was like, God, he sounds like a role player wrote this. Now that's not a negative. 
It's just that I've been role playing since 1980, right? And it just, I, I could just, I could feel it. I could tell it in the word somehow in the words. It was just, it was conveying to me. And then I wrote, read your uh, show notes, and I was like, ah, oh, he's a role player, and he, and and writing has inspired it. So, um, so I, I could feel it in your writing. So, what what do you think? What is, wh- how has writing helped you as a role player, or, or other way around? Role playing helped you as a writer. I started role playing in the late seventies when I was a teenager. I'm really old, so that's how that works. And when I was in the army in the late in the mid eighties is where I, I just gained everything in sight because it was that was just the culture I was in back then. Right. Having run games for thirty years, played different characters, it I get you into a mental headspace where you actually believe the character is a person in their own right. You do things he says, this makes sense for this person to do. This person would do these things. And being able to do characters and settings and plots like you do in role playing really does translate across to being a writer as long as you don't try to write a story about your character. Yeah. Oh, this God, no. Bad. <laughs> right. Right. There's some there's a sense. I think they say that a lot. Like, like, don't ever write stories about your characters. because I've heard uh, I've heard of people doing that and it usually ends badly. And I've thought about why that is like, like, why would that be? You know, because you think you did these you did these great stories and you had a lot of fun and everything. Uh, but I think the problem is, is that you can't get away from the nepotism that would that would be in that, you know. And when I say nepotism, your character's sort of like an extension of yourself, almost like uh, another you, like a child of you. So it's almost like um, you get trapped in that, you know, um, you know, everything seems cooler to you because you imagine it in your head that way. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you also it's, it's like a Mary Sue sort of thing. Are you familiar right. with the term? Oh, yeah. You, you yeah. want to make that character an extension of you. You want that character to succeed. But to write a good story about a character, you've got to really mess them up. You've got to cause them some serious problems that they have to really struggle to get out of. And it's hard doing that to something that you want to, to coddle like a character. You don't right. want your characters to get nuked. And that's what a DM is for. Yes. They're the ones who give your character all right. the strife. Right. So maybe the DM would be a good person to write a story. Yeah, right. I think the DM is like the writing equivalent of your editor. Yeah. Right there. Mm-hmm. Right. Now, I have so here's a question. So have you ever made up uh I'm not saying like one of your so you're not playing this as one of your characters, not writing it as one of your characters, but just for your own um cuz cuz I've I've want, I've thought about doing this, but I I'm not sure if it would work. Have you ever considered making the character for your story, not playing them or anything, but just but like using a rule system, making it up so that you know all this stuff about your character and like what they can do and can't do, you know, cause that's one of the things that's great about role playing is that, you know, it would tell you what your strength is and what your, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever system you're playing, it would tell you all about your character and what their capabilities are. Uh, have you ever done that? I've never done that. I, I never really felt the need to do that because I felt like it would lock me in too much. Once I put it down on paper, True. it's concrete to me. And I can't change things as I'm going along. When you're writing a character that you don't actually have everything spelled out for them, if you need to change a background fact, suddenly you need a sister. You need an uncle. You need them to have done something in the past. You need them to have a skill. Right. You can just make it happen. Right. As long as it's plausible, you can make it happen. So I guess maybe if you were like one of these writers who's like super heavy outlining you could get away with it it would probably wouldn't hurt you too bad because you've already kind of half written your story before you've actually started writing right i mean you know every little detail of what's going on but um i know listening i've listened to dead robot society a couple times um you, you and paul no it's fine <laughs> you you and paul uh, bantering back and forth and I know Paul basically has an idea for a story and he just starts and he writes until it's done. He doesn't like, I think he has the most minuscule plan of what's going to happen. And that often changes as it goes along. And I think you were saying the same thing. Cause I think, haven't you changed like the name of your, your latest book, like four or five times you were saying? Yes, because those bastards just aren't getting where I want them to go. <laughs> and actually Paul does outline a lot more than I do. I'm the one that, that I start, I start out a story with a character in a situation, and I may have a vague idea where that story is going to go, but often it never makes it there. I just okay. write by the seat of my pants the entire way. All right, and is that it? Um, you know, some authors say that that's the only way that they want to write because it's enjoyable to them to do it that way. Um, you know, it's not like. Not like, oh, I, I have no idea where I'm going to go with the story and I'm just going to write and see what happens. It's I choose to do this because it's the way I like to write. Is that is that your case? 
finish my case. I've tried outlining and it feels like it sucks the soul right out of the story for me. Right. It feels like I've already told the story by the time I finish writing the outline. Right, right. Yeah, I'm planning on, Mike knows, I've been planning on writing this book. I've got a book in the back of my head for the last 10 years and I'm always any, doing like- Any year now. Any, any year any now, year. right, right. No, well, I've, I've always got all these other things I'm doing, you know, I'm like doing podcasting and I'm I'm working with the TSR, the new TSR games and I'm I'm, d I'm getting ready to launch a game on Kickstarter, my own, a, a new game I'm going to launch in February. Um, and I'm always like super busy, like with all these other things and I'm like, oh, I could just never get to it. I keep making notes and notes and notes and notes. And I think what I'm going to try is, because uh, I am going to get to it, I will get to it. Uh, mm -hmm. I want to try this. <laughs> I want to try this process of of having like hot spots in the story. Like I have a scene in my head, and I know how this wants to go down. I have an overall idea how the how the whole story is going to kind of work out. I, I know what the ending is, and I know I pretty much know what the beginning is, and a couple spots along the way, and then the rest of it is getting everybody to those dots. So like taking a map, putting dots on it, and then drawing between the dots in, in a sense. You know what I mean? I do know what you mean. You've been a game master many times in the past, haven't you? I have, yes, yes. How much luck have you had corralling your players into going exactly to where you want them to go? Uh, fucking impossible. It's like a clowder of players. <laughs> so I say to you, good luck on making that happen. Here's, here's, let me give you a thought on that. You say you don't have any time to write. Could you find time to write 250 words? I probably could, maybe could maybe wait hold on let, let me rewind that after this kickstarter yes before the kickstarter no mm -hmm. i'm balls to the wall on this i'm okay. i'm like i, I spent all weekend 250 words you could probably if you're a decent typist you could knock that out in 10 or 15 minutes so it's it's not a whole okay. lot of words there 250 words a day for an entire year gives you a novel so if you say you don't have time, it's because you're not you're thinking of the big thing that you're trying to do. Right. And writing a novel is a series of very small steps. I can write okay. a scene today. I can write 100 words today. I can write 500 words today. I can write whatever I do today. As long as you keep focusing on the steps, you will right. finish the product. If you look at saying, I'm going to write a novel, you will be 10 years saying, I'm going to write a novel and never actually start it because it's going to intimidate you. Right, uh, and it, it did that to me too. So I've been there. Uh, and my uh, advice to you is is to just rock on, do a little uh, bit. I, I'm just thinking, Pete. I mean, if only there was some recognized month that acknowledged it was for nationally recognized writers to to concentrate on that. If only but there was like one month. That, like, one, I mean, you guys, you guys have a big audience. You could probably start something like write a novel in September. I'm sure that could work. Nah, it, September's too busy. Like, it, it, you're just getting off the summer. It's got to be some other starting time. back up, you know. Yeah, it's November. No, November. Maybe November. Yeah, what about that? Knock it out I before thought, Christmas, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That could yeah. Huh. That's a great idea. You should finish that. What do you call it? Yeah. National Novel Writers something. No, uh, that, you would never be able to hey, come up with a word hey, for that. Hey, Mike. Yeah. Right here. No, I'll do it. All right. You know what? Maybe I'll do that. Maybe, maybe maybe that's what I need to do. All right, Mike, you help me out with this, Mike. Make sure I do this. I'll, I'll do NaNoWriMo this year. I'll, I'll do it this year because I'll, I'll just make sure right now I'm saying, look, hey, it's January. I'm going to clean everything off my plate. Now, for I have a question about NaNoWriMo, though. Can – is it okay to have some, like, like outline and notes and all that kind of stuff before you go? Absolutely. It, okay. NaNoWriMo is what you choose to take into it. It's like it's like the Dark Jedi tree. Whatever you take in is what you've got. Well, Don't wait worry about Hold on. I'm, I'm looking. Nope. It specifically says in the NaNoWriMo rules, no, no pre-planning at all. Zero. Zilch. You cannot do that or it doesn't count. Neener, neener. <laughs> I say do what works for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I know. Mike, Mike you're, you're, you're being funny. All right. So, cool. Um, so, I would say... What was the biggest challenge? What, what is the biggest challenge you've run into um, that has has hurt your writing from role playing? Now I know it helps, but has there been anything that's like, like you know, I got to stop thinking about it this way? Be and you know what I mean? Like, has you has has you has you have you ever run into any um, um, things that kind of like uh, like pigeonholed you at first? Like, did you have any any humps to get over when you were doing that? As far as role playing, no. It's because mm -hmm. I never actually tried to make role playing a part of my writing. I just used the experience I gained in doing it 
to help me make the writing happen the way I wanted to. So I never tried to pigeonhole it. Okay, got it. All right. And what about your work at, at, at uh, NASA and, um, you know, on, on the space shuttle and stuff? I, I, you write a lot of science fiction. I'm, I'm certain that's got to have come in, uh, come in really heavily on your work. Well, what I did at NASA was I was an IT guy that worked in the Mission Control Center itself directly for the flight controllers, making sure that when, when they brought up a screen, what they wanted to have happen when they clicked a button is what actually happened. That was mm. my job. So I was like first line technical support for that sort of thing. Hmm. And so uh, I don't know how much of that would actually make it into my work, but the, the grandeur of being part of something like the, the right. space program certainly bleeds through because you get to see the, the flight controllers day in and day out and a more dedicated and, and driven set of people. I don't think you could ever meet. Those guys are amazing. So they're also gotta... engineers and, and incredible nerds that are very focused on what they do. So, right. there you so go. I was going to ask you this, like a uh, uh, flight controller, the, the term, the broad, uh, it seems like a broad, a broad term, but is it not, is it, you were just saying that, do they have to be uh, engineers or are, are there different specialties of engineering or of different? Absolutely. There are a lot of different specialties. You've got everything from propulsion to, um, uh, the, the life support that you're doing in there. Each of them has their own little call signs. They're Oso, they are Thor, they are our, our prop. They are any number of different things and they all have their subspecialties. Most of them, I would wager, are probably engineers of some flavor or another. Okay. You're not going to find many flight controllers that aren't an engineer of some kind. Hmm. Right. And I think you kind of have to have an engineering kind of mind, you know I mean? I, I'm I, That's what I do. I'm an engineer and, and I, it just seems like most of what I do most of the time is putting out fires, not physical ones, although that has happened. Um, <laughs> I, I feel like I'm always having to figure out stuff, like how are we going to make this work, you know, or we'll, we'll make something and everything will work except for this one thing. And it's like, well, shit, that screws us up. Uh, uh, okay, what are we going to do? And then it's like, you know, I just go, all right, give me some time and I'll go and think about it for a while. And then, you know, maybe I'll, I'll go to my desk and I'll jot down, I'll do some sketches and try you know, think on it, go talk to people, go talk to a mechanic, go to whatever's, you know, go, just go talk to different people. And then I come back and I'm like, I got it. I got it. And how we're going to fix it. Right. And I just feel like I, that's what I do. All, most, most of my job is doing that, you know, so little time in the actual, um, initial creation of things. I have other engineers I work with, um, you know, and, and being, a, I'm also a project manager. So most of the time I'm telling other engineers what to do. Uh, well, I guess telling is a strong word. Uh, I'm suggesting what they should do. Uh, and then they do it. They do great stuff and then we'll run into a problem. And then they look to me and they go, well, this, this is where you come in, <laughs> you know? And I, I would imagine that NASA folks, they, that's kind of, they have to all have that, especially flight controllers, right? The way that sort of thing works is you've got the guy, the flight controller that's in the front room. That's the one that if you turn on the television and you see the people sitting there, that's the front room guys. Behind them in a different room, they've got the back room and they've got three or four or five other people on console doing subtasks for them, doing other things to assist them in what they're doing. And those people have other engineers behind them that aren't on console that are assisting them in doing it. And they've got these huge books of process and procedures and schematics that just line the walls of every possible contingency that, that they can think of, that if something goes wrong, they'll try to fix it. It's like a NASA right. Ponzi scheme. Right. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and up the, and they're, they're all, all right, so first off, they start off that the, every one of them, even the dumbest one, is smarter than me, okay? So we start there, and then right. we go up. I don't know, man. When I started there, one of the first days that I had had been there, one of the people was leading me around by the nose saying, okay, this is how you're going to do your job and going on trouble calls for flight controllers. And we had a flight controller call us into the front room and say, this monitor is a little faded. I'm afraid I've got so many programs open that I'm draining the color from the pixels. So do not assume really? as they are okay. a brilliant engineer that they know computers. Right. Okay. Fair enough. Hey, Fair enough. Pete, I got good news. What's it? You think you're the one at the bottom, but I got there's someone else that's behind you, and that that'd be me. Right. Okay. So right, got enough. that going for you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So what I do get from the NASA folks is is the whole sense of drive to accomplish your goals, 
And those bleed through into my heroes because the heroes in my novels, they are driven people. They have very difficult goals that they must achieve to make that story come out in their favor. And they've got to set the adversity aside and work their way through it. So the personality of the characters was definitely driven by the people that I worked with. Okay. So yeah, so I'm reading Heart of Vengeance, and uh, the main character is is a, is a young guy. He uh, he's serving aboard. I think it's a merchant ship. Is that uh, is it that is. right? Yeah, he's it's serving aboard a merchant ship. A merchant ship. Uh, and this is no spoilers. This happens right at the very beginning of the book. Uh, they get attacked by pirates, uh, and and I don't know if the whole crew is killed yet or not. I'm not I'm not at the end of the book. I I have a tiny little feeling we might somebody might live, but who knows? Uh, if you're Cooley, they're dead as fuck. But uh, <laughs> but uh, and, you know maybe they're dead. I don't know. But at any rate, um, so he's 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 got anger issues because of all this. You know he's he's you know it comes up throughout the book and. Um, but he he is trying to rise above adversity, and I will say this this book I don't know about all your books, but this one seems like a real action adventure type of deal. I tell you, I blinked, and he went from one fight to another. So there's there's a lot happening. There is a lot happening. In this one thing about this book is that it's it's partly my voice, but the original story of this novel was written by Glenn Stewart, and my part of writing this book and the one that came after it was going through it and rewording it and rephrasing and adding scenes and doing a lot of work to make it, bring it up to speed. He wrote this years ago. So a lot of the toad is mine, but I can't take credit for the initial setup and um, okay. a good number of the events that occur in this. The first book that you're reading, the second half of that book, I wrote, That's that was me writing it into the dark. The first half okay. of it, following the story that went along. So you'll have to try to figure out where that, where that is. Uh -huh. Where it took where they took the turn, huh? Okay, but it, it's good. I got to tell you, I'm 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 very impressed. I had uh, I'd, I'd heard your name banded around. I'm part of the you know I go to Balticon and um, you know and, and you know I know Paul and the whole crew, all those all the same, probably most of the same people you know uh, in that crew. And uh, I'd heard your name mentioned a bunch of times. I think we may lies, have even lies all lies. <laughs> well, they said um, you were a great guy. I don't. Okay, well, that's true. Okay. Okay. Right. <laughs> but I had never read any of your stuff yet. I hadn't gotten around, you know, so many books, so little time. And I was like, uh, then I was, uh, you know, the beginning of this year, I was looking for, for guests and I was thinking, you know what? Paul's talked about Terry a bunch of times. Um, and, and they do, uh, um, the dead robot society together. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm not like a staunch listener to dead robots. I listen every once in a while when I have, you know, when I'm like looking for something. To your listen sanity to. thanks you. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> I can only, it, can, the brain can only take so much at one time, but um, but you know, I was like, oh, let's have Terry on. Let's you know. So then I was like, well, I guess I should buy one of his books if I'm gonna uh, if I'm gonna interview you. I should maybe read one of them. Uh, and I got most of the way through. I got you know, it, it's been uh, it's been a busy it's been a busy time, um, but yeah, so far so good. I'm I'm looking forward to the end. I think I got about an hour left. So I'm that's glad you're right. enjoying it. It's about seven eighths. I think I'm about seven eighths. Fine. I'm sure that everything's gonna turn out okay. Yeah, sure, sure. I don't know. You know Cooley, so uh, I, I don't know. He, he may have influenced you um, to, to, you know, molest the characters into, you know, oblivion. That's Cooley, all right. Molesting the characters, that's yeah. him all over. Right. <laughs> so, Webb, so are, my... are you part of Shadow Publications? I am not. Okay, no. so then maybe there is a happy ending because we know with Shadow Publications – they don't believe in happy endings, so... They don't, but uh, well, I, you know, I gotta tell you that I'm a happy end, relatively happy ending kind of guy, so okay. I oh, can see the yeah. dark, dark things for me. That's not hey, how I roll. Hey, me too. I'm a happy ending kind of guy. What about you, Mike? You like a happy ending? Uh, when it comes to massages <laughs> and uh, fairy tales, yes. I was gonna kind of leave that ambiguous, time. Mike. Oh. Th thanks for pulling that right out into the... <laughs> No, no more double entendre here. We just went right no. to entendre. Oh, oh, I did. It was a double. It was two things. See, please, please tell me that you put your pants on before the show. Uh, actually, you know what's funny? You say that I did. Uh, yeah. I I had taken my oh. pants off earlier, and oh. uh, when I like what I had long johns on. It's, it's fucking cold <laughs> outside, man. My legs were itchy, so I oh, never mind. Uh -huh. Anyways, yeah. so I did. Mm -hmm. I did put my pants on. Oh, good, good. Uh, hey, hey, Mike. Uh, there's somebody, yeah. somebody in the chat room. Somebody named Jennifer talking about happy endings. Does, uh, but, uh, enough about Jennifer. Listen, uh, David had a question. Okay, <laughs> David was was curious uh, if uh, 
there are any do you ever put any easter eggs in your books i sometimes do all right well there you go david and then he also had to ask before that he said he asked about did you ever take any of your characters and put them in books now uh, i don't he may not have he may not have heard the beginning of when we started talking so uh it still may bear question like have you ever taken an old character and stuck it in a book that you didn't try and you know turn into mary sue or no never did okay there you go now, do you kill um, do you kill any of your fans like Cooley does? Yeah, I have killed some fans. Okay. But I mean yeah. about it. Okay. A guy named J.R. Handley asked me to make his death in a story incredibly bloody, so I incinerated him with a plasma blast that left no blood or flesh or anything left. Just wiped him away. Poof. Oh, all right. So I'm mean that way. Nice. Yeah, I'm hoping Cooley Good. keeps his promise to Mike and I. He was supposed to oh, yeah. He's supposed to in our, in our the next outbreak book, so it's probably never going to happen because it keeps getting pushed off into oblivion. But yeah, right. if he ever writes that one, he's supposed to write us in there as uh, as two gay characters who are killed horribly. Um, we're supposed to. I don't know if he's going to do that. I don't know if he's going to go that far. We're supposed to be like partners, right, Mike? Uh, well, we are partners. Hey, easy, so. easy now, easy. Not not that kind of partner. Hashtag happy ending. <laughs> But, so, I have but, this, why do I have this vision of you two like in a cabin somewhere doing something, you know, and then suddenly, yeah, that's over. Yeah. Well, well, well it, it, two of us in a cabin is more like misery. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, uh, so we taught him to kill us horribly. There should, there should yeah. be uh, different forms of bodily fluids involved, like a, like a sewer main break or so, I don't know something, anything. Well, Go crazy. I know what he did for me in in one of the outbreak books is he ripped me in half so that my lower torso went one way and my upper torso went the other, and everything scattered everywhere around. So I'm sure he's got a nice gory oh, end there for you. Which book did he kill you in? I don't remember. Okay. Was it, was it a black? You. Was it one of the black books? Do you know if it was in the black yeah, series? It was one of the black books. I think it was because okay. I, I I think I remember a, a Terry dying in the black books. <laughs> it was horrible. Yeah. <laughs> I just you know, I just. You know, it's funny, Mike. You were saying that my wife Terry just joined. Not you, Terry. This Terry. We're we're interviewing yeah. Terry. Not right. not Terry, my wife. But Terry, our guest. <laughs> wow. Yeah. When you think of Terry and happy endings, please do not think of me. Right. <laughs> All right. I will only think of Pete's wife. Uh, easy, uh, easy, wait easy a minute, now. Wait, a minute. wait, no, wait no, rewind. No, no. stop, stop, no. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Terry. <laughs> All right. So, uh, uh, blah, blah, blah. So, so real quick, just um, tell us about one of your other books. So, I, I want to, you know, I haven't I haven't read any of your other books yet. Um, what is your favorite? What's the favorite book that you've written? What What is the book that I don't sort of like your premier book? Your the the one that you're like, hey, tell you right, what should I read? And you go, oh, this is the one you, you should, should read. read. The Empire of Bones. Okay. It's not the Empire. It's the Empire of Bones saga. The book is Empire of Bones. Okay. And the character I love in this this is a, this is a story about people coming up off a world that's been lacking space flight for 500 years because the Terran Empire was destroyed in a terrible civil war. Okay. So the people that are doing it, they're going out are exploring the dead worlds of the old empire. And one of the characters, Princess Kelsey, is this little bitty blonde girl that's five foot nothing that is, is just your average noble woman that uh, is, she's just got her own little attitudes that she's doing. As part of this story, I don't want to spoil it for you, she's got to step up. She's got to become okay. a lot more than she was when she started this. And if you're thinking things like, implanted muscles and big marine fights and whatnot that's what she has to get involved with so that's what i'd recommend okay awesome 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 i'm terrible at elevator pitches see okay no uh, that was good mike you said you're gonna say something okay, i don't know something if there. uh paul was asking paul noons was asking is it like ham uh hammers is it hammer slammers hammers yeah it's not it, David Drake writes that the Hammer Slammer stuff is it is solid military. Mine is very much space opera with a good dash of military thrown in. Mine's more adventure stories than okay. than military fights like David Weber or David Drake would give out. I a love little more, things. a little more Horatio Hornblower. I would say that yes. Okay, fantastic. All right, because it seems to be a very popular series that most people have read if they're into science fiction and stuff. Hmm. All right. 
All right. Well, um, I, I got one more thing before we play our game, Terry, that I want to ask about. Uh, and I love this. You said you reload your own rounds. You even cast your own lead bullets. And uh, I, I love that, man. I love I love going out and just just throwing some lead down, you know, down down lane. Um, what are you shooting? I shoot. Uh, I have a set of Glocks in the house. Everything from 45 caliber, 40 caliber, nine millimeter. 40 caliber is my favorite. I tried to like the 45, but yeah, I like the 40 better. I do. I like the 40 caliber too. That's a good. I like. I do like the 45 as well. But I do. I, do I, like love, the I love a 45. Too. I love a good M1911. Yeah. That's, oh that's man, good. I was in the that's army. Good. I'm afraid I can't be with you there. I'd like to have something <laughs> a little bit more modern, perhaps a bit more reliable. Ooh. Yeah, it's. But I had. Um, I had a friend of mine. Uh, he had a he had a forty uh, forty five revolver, and god damn it, thing was smooth. I just you know I pulled it. It just felt right. Like the weight was perfect. The uh, the the pull was fantastic. I was very accurate with it. And I started firing this. Um, I have a I have a a, a thirty eight. I have this um, this shitty little cop old you know snub nose uh, cop pistol basically uh, from back in the seventies. You know. And that thing, God damn! I hope I never need that in a firefight because my ass is dead. I, it's like it's all over the place. It's not accurate at all. Like you know when they say gunfights usually happen within thirty feet. Well, there's a reason for that because yeah. because <laughs> you know if if you're carrying a small gun and you pull it out, I mean it's like you know small bullet, big sky, right? Yep. Hey, I just like to point out that my my lovely lady has a Glock. Does and she? A 45, oh, right? actually. oh yeah, hey, yeah. Nice. We gotta go. We all gotta go shooting sometime. Does your right. Terry um no does your Terry go shooting? No. 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 I'd like oh, to well. take her. I want to get her involved. I, I she's never shot a gun in her life and she doesn't like guns. She doesn't like me having guns. She does I mean I can, it's no big deal, but she's not really she's not a fan of it, you know what I mean? But I want Jenny, to take her shooting cuz I think she would like it. I think she would yeah. like it. Jenny, start, we got to work with a 9 millimeter. Or yeah. maybe even go with a something smaller if you could find a, a 380 that doesn't have a big kick to it. But nine millimeters is where you want to go. Something soft pitching like that. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to my mom in in the chat room too. She's like, she's like, oh, I shoot a water gun, so you know. Oh God. <laughs> So, uh, so Mike, what we have to do, uh, Steve has invited us to come up. So, um, you know, Roy, Roy wants, you know, we're, we're trying to plan this out at some point. So we'll go up to Steve's place. We can shoot all day long. Uh, oh, yeah? get Roy, you can come up. It'll be a good time. Bring your lady friend. <gasps> Yay! So, so how close do you guys keep your guns to you? Come on, tell me that, tell me that they're right there. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, no, I just put the, I oh, just put the zombies put got you. The zombies got you. <laughs> no, wait. Zombie shit. Let's go, zombie. Let's go. <laughs> I'm nice. ready for it, man. I got, I'm good. I got like five of these up on my thing here. I'm, I'm, I'm dead. Mike, are you dead? I, I, I got oh, some, God. I got some, uh, medical tape and, uh, and some, uh, I got I got some ointment, so you know. No, I had to. No, I had to put. I had to put mine away. I got. I got a nine-year-old, and I don't yeah. know how curious she's going to be yet. And the, the safe the, stuff. Yeah, I, I got one's in a lockbox under my bed, um, but I need a lockbox for the other one. Um, so I mean, I could put the, put them in the same box, but I really I want to get a new box anyway. I want to get a thumbprint one so that I'm not like fuck it. Where's the key? Where's the key? Shit, the key, 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 and get killed while somebody you know while I'm trying to get the key in the box. They've got ones now that use the uh, RFID, so you can have it like on your key ring right there beside the bed, hang it up there by the thing, and it pop open. Oh, so you may want to think about something like that. Well, I don't I, have no, kids around the house, so I can I can safely leave mine. Mind lurking about right yeah i don't know about the rfid because then if my kid gets a thing and i think thumbprints away from me i think that's gonna have to be just just to be on the safe side you know i got a, I I do got want... a fingerprint one in the car and yeah it sometimes takes you more than one try to get those suckers so just remember <laughs> that you want to test drive something if you're if you're going to go that route we will do all right good good note good note and dave, dave and i are in agreement we say that our swords are always loaded so have you ever had to <laughs> use your sword uh, uh, no zombie incursion just yet. So I used to be a member of, of the Society for Creative Anachronism years oh, yeah, ago. Yeah, the SCA. And uh, <laughs> when I was stationed at Fort Campbell, Kentucky, we went to an event in Nashville at a hotel. And so me and three of my friends are walking from where we had to park toward the hotel, and some guy pops out of an alley with a knife and going, "Give me your wallets." And all three of us are like, "Shit!" Oh, like, nice. Gone. <laughs> 
<laughs> nice. Yeah, we probably wasn't we, the safest thing for us to do. We could have had a gun, but there yeah. you are. True. We we have some experience with SCA. We uh we, we used to go to Penzik uh every year for a couple of years there. Uh Did Penzik's they give you a big... with Pittsburgh. That's what I want to know. What's that? Isn't Penzik where they give away the loser gets Pittsburgh? <laughs> yeah, I think so. I believe so. But yeah, the loser wins Pittsburgh, right? But it it was it's a pretty badass event. I, we haven't been, dude. We haven't been in what, Mike, twenty five years? I think it has, has yeah, it been that it's long. It's been quite a while. And then have how about we've missed like two more ten year events. Yeah, right. They uh the last time we went, it rained the entire weekend. It was so fucking miserable it turned us off of it for a while and then we just never got back to it. But dude, it was so we came back, we're just like, What did we get, man? Mud. We got mud. mud. That's all we got. Mud. <laughs> I used to be a heavy fighter in the SCA. I've still got my armor downstairs in a in a duffel bag. Oh, you so, rhino hide? I was, I was a squire for a good number of years. That's okay. awesome. Were you were you one of the rhino hides where they had to beat on your ass to get you to go yes, down? Yes, I was. I'm grabbing something. All right. Uh oh, folks, he's gonna grab his sword. He's... Be careful. No. No. <laughs> Here we go. What's he got? What you got? Oh, okay. A beat up old red belt. From nice. my squire days. Oh, fantastic. Uh-oh. Fantastic. Which one of us was bad? What? Oh. <laughs> we're getting the belt? Yeah, we're don't make me get my base out of, out of storage. I'll come after you. Right. <laughs> Jennifer said, even a loser doesn't deserve Pittsburgh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Nice. That's terrible. It's <laughs> terrible. Terrible. We love Pittsburgh. No, we, we might don't. have Pittsburgh. We might have Pittsburgh fans. Well, <laughs> you can love the people and hate the city. Yes. Le okay. Love All the right, play and hate enough. the game. Yeah. That's <laughs> All right. So hey, let's let's stay on schedule this week, Mike. Let's do that. Why don't we? Why don't we? Let's do it, man. Let's play a game. Right. You want to play a game? Right. Hold no. on. Wait. First, I'm nope. a terrible first. game player, though. So this is gonna suck. Uh, That's all right. It doesn't matter. Our games are you, you don't have to be good. It's it's all luck. Uh, so first off, uh, go to Amazon.com. Check out. Uh, type in Terry Mixon. It's uh, Amazon.com forward slash T E R R Y dash M I X O N forward slash E. It's in the link. Uh, forward I'm, slash B. I'm the only Terry Mixon on on okay. Amazon. You, you can find you me go. with a search that way. Easy. Fantastic, and it's M I X O N. I kept I kept That's typing right. it wrong, right? Well, in yes, Maryland, down, down here, Terry, down here in Baltimore, I gotta make sure I say O N. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, uh, also check out Dead Robot Society. That's robots. That's an S, and then society is the second S. dot com, and then Facebook. dot com forward slash groups forward slash D R S podcast, uh, and listen to the podcast. It's actually pretty good. It's not not too bad. Uh, even we try not to suck. It. Yeah, no, I mean, Paul's on it, so, you know. No, we love Paul. <laughs> um, all he's right, a so great guy. He is. He's fantastic. He's, he's our most frequent flyer, Mike. we got to be nice he to is. Paul. He is. All right, so let's do this. Let's, uh, let's, uh, let me uh, hit the button. Nope, not that button. This button. And then we'll hit, sorry, i got a new toy I've been playing with. Here we go. It's game time with the Mythwits. I'm your game master, Peter Bryant. And on this episode, we're playing Survey Says. We have conducted a survey with our panel of geeks. You must do your best to guess the five most popular answers to these survey questions. Most popular answer will give you five points. On down to the least popular answer of one point. I will read out the question and player one will answer, followed by player two. We'll circle back around and give each of our contestants a second chance. The next question will start with player two and we'll go around like that until we're out of questions. The player with the highest score at the end of the game wins. Uh, Mike, I'll give you a second to open up the score sheet in the, in the drive. Already open, bro. Fantastic. All Eddie, right. All right. let's do this. Let's do this. All right, so hold on. Let me... Let me pull this up. I can put this. No, I can't do that. Well, we started. Sorry. We started a, a Pittsburgh war over here. Did you? Oh god. <laughs> oh, oh lord. All right. So then, let me do. Uh, la, 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 la. I got that. I got that. Okay. So we can do the main screen. So here is. That. Paul said Pittsburgh doesn't have the interwebs. There we go. All right. <laughs> All right, guys, and then I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and share this screen. 
with you. So there you go. You can see it. Why is it blinking? Why is it blinking? All right, there we go. <laughs> Why are that they blinking? Weird. I don't know. It was weird. It was like blink, 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 blink. Okay. There are four lights. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're gonna st we're gonna start. We're gonna start with Mike. Huh? All right. Who? What? We're, we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna start with Mike. We should, we'll, we'll let you have the first one. Um, what I do? I didn't do it. What'd you do? All right, Mike. All right. Yes. We asked one hundred geeks, and literally one hundred. I got one hundred answers. What? thing doing that give me one second i'm trying to clean this up a little bit all right clean it up well i'm i can wait I'm, I'm not doing anything i'm just doing a show don't worry about me what the heck is going on with this stupid thing i don't know i don't know whatever i ain't gonna worry about it all right so it's looking, what? It's looking good bro it's looking good okay who who is your favorite justice league member what what did our esteemed geek audience who did they think was their favorite <sighs> Justice League member. Uh, when did uh, these questions go out? Uh, this was in the last uh, four months. Okay, so everyone's gearing up for the Justice League movie, but probably they hadn't seen it yet. Uh, I don't know. I uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go. Uh, Jenny's son-in-law is a huge Superman fan. He loves Superman more than Batman. I'm going to go with Superman on this one, even though I'm thinking that maybe I shouldn't, but I'm going to go with Superman. Superman. All right, Mike. Superman. Came no. in at number three. So do I get, what is this, the 10 you points, get three points or the three no, points? Three, three no, points. Three, dude, come on. Three points. It's 10 people picked that one. Okay. So it's three points. All right, Terry, All right. your chance. Who do you think our geeks picked as the top? Um, See, now, the answer of what I think would be the top is going to be different than my own personal favorite. So my that's... personal favorite, not my guess, is it would have to be the damn Wonder Twins. I loved those guys when I was Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. So I would have to pick that, but it's going to be Batman. That's going to be who's at the top of the list. Okay. I'm going to dis I'm gonna go on record right now and oh. disagree. I'm going to oh. say... That there's another one that's on top, but I will be right. choosing either way. Uh, Go, ahead. Mike, Go ahead. Mike, reveal. I'm, I'm, I'm so glad that you jumped in there because Batman, number one. Uh, <laughs> screw you. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right. All right. Well, then, well, then I'm just going to I'm gonna say number two is a cool Wonder Woman. Uh, Gotta be. Gotta be Wonder Woman, huh? Okay. And Terry gets five points on that one. And then yeah. I get four points, four on, points on that on one. The Wonder Woman. Yes, sir. All right. On the Wonder Woman. Yes, on the Wonder Woman. All right. Oh man, that's uh, back to you, Terry. Now you gotta yeah. gotta find out. Are you gonna pick? Uh, you know, you know, you know, the flailing floppy guy or somebody else. Well, it depends on which Aquaman you know you're a big fan of on this here. You know, you could have the Jason Momoa version of. of eh, eh, he's still doing. We're, we're gonna go with Aquaman anyway, even though he's probably not even on the list. Aquaman. All right, Aquaman. Number five, squeaked thought, in at the end. I was think Jason say Momoa has saved the the Aquaman <laughs> franchise single handedly. Get it? Can He's I got one hand. He's Aquaman with one. N never mind. What was there ever? Was there ever an Aquaman franchise though? Come on. <laughs> there is now. There is now. Uh, when you well, look like Jason Momoa. Momoa yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, he's he's see. pretty dreamy there, Mike. Um, all right. So yeah. actually, normally I'd only do two. I'll do I'll do a third. So there's only two of y'all. Do a third round. So go ahead, Mike. Oh, well, I mean, it's either I'm gonna get it or not, and uh, right. Terry may get it or not. But yeah. um, I'm glad you cleared that up. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, uh, Mike. <laughs> we were we were in doubt. <laughs> in anticipation of the movie, I just wanted to let you know what was at stake. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna go uh, with Flash. Flash. Mike, uh, Flash. Oh, oh man, my buzzer's not working. Flash. No, it worked. In. We heard it just fine. Heard it. Oh wow, why am I not hearing it? That's interesting. Okay, anyway, Flash came in uh, in sixth place, tied with Green mm, with someone else. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. With a green guy. With the green guy, with the Hulk. You tied with the Hulk. Uh, <laughs> Terry, <laughs> Terry, you... All right, Terry, what do you think, man? I, One more. Now I've narrowed it down well, for you. I, I, 
I'm going to have to go with Cyborg, although I'm still secretly hoping that it's going to be the Wonder Twins. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, nope. I'm sorry. No. Uh, uh, he did. Who, who, who was that again? The, the Who did you say? C- Cyborg. 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 Right. My brain farted. No, he didn't even make our list. He's not. Didn't even wow. make the list. Now, this is yeah. before Justice League came out. So, uh, <laughs> nope. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and reveal it. Number four was Green Arrow. Everybody forgets that guy. Oliver, Green Lantern. You know, Green Lantern man. was the one that. Are you kidding me? Green Arrow before Flash. The hey, he Flash has a TV you show. Ask these questions too. I think I like Green the Arrow Queen better than on the comic book than I did in the TV show. Just got to say, so, sorry, Arnell. I'm, I'm sorry I, about that. I kind of like the Green Arrow from um, from uh, Smallville. I kind of like that green arrow. I thought he was all right. Mm. All right. Let's move on to the next one. Who is your favorite Legion of Doom villain? Ooh. I'm going to let Terry go first oh. this time. Christ. Legion of Doom. Oh, I have always loved Lex Luthor, so I'm going to stick with him. God damn. Yeah. Pick Lex. the only one I know. Oh, Lex Luth- come on. Lex Luthor. Doom. Number f- came in second place, Mike. Four Christ. points. Uh, no searching Google. No, I'm no, too no, we, busy keeping score here. Uh, oh God! Basically, Legion just of, think of DC oh. villains. Almost, uh, not all, but almost all DC villains have been in the Legion of Doom. <laughs> I love Dave. I know he's behind, but I know he's like Apache Chief. No chunk. No chunk. I love that guy. Right. Yes. All right. Um, oh God, damn it! Uh, Legend. Uh, uh, yeah. Shit! Oh come on! Uh, who's the Hulk the... equivalent? The Hulk equivalent is is the he's he's white. He's gray something or I don't know what his name is. Solomon Grundy. Yes. All right, Solomon Grundy. I'm and... gonna give I'm giving Mike a little help here. Solomon Grundy. Third oh place. shit! You're oh on, my god! On. I'd like to got thank the point. Academy <laughs> right. and you, Pete. All right, come on, Terry. What do you got? Well, since I since I picked uh, that man the other time, we got to go with the Joker. <gasps> the oh, Joker. I didn't know the Joker was in the Legion of Doom. No, everybody's uh, been in the Legion of Doom. Unfortunately, Joker did not make the list. He's not on well, the list at all. No that's one picked. The way him. I think, it works. You know what I think? I think most people don't realize because he didn't. He wasn't Legion of Doom very much because he's sort of like Spider Man. He doesn't play well with others. That's true. At all. <laughs> so. Here's your opportunity to, to take the lead. Come on, man. You can all do right, it, Mike. Mike. Oh, crap. Uh, shit. I didn't. I, uh, I pulled Solomon Grundy out of my butt, and that hurt. He's big. Well, Mike, um, you watch The Flash, right? Uh, yeah. Oh. You- oh. Uh, yeah. I don't think the ape is part of him. Gr- uh, gr- 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 Grod. Grod. But uh, I don't think it's Grodd, because uh, there's a whole planet Grodd and all that crap. No, there is a, there is a Grodd. There's a Gorilla Grodd. No, I I know. Uh, I'm gonna say, uh, uh, not the Reverse Flash. Who, who is it? Uh, uh, he's the Blue Flash. He's um, crap. Oh, shit. Oh damn it! I'm blanking on it. Um, I'm blanking on it. I don't know. I I got nothing. You got nothing. All right, Mike. You get a no. <laughs> Terry. <Yeah. laughs> I'll let you let's do one more. Let's this. go with Doctor Doom. Doctor Doctor Doom. Let me see. That, that was his final answer. That was his final answer. Huh? <laughs> yeah, that's fine. I don't mind that. Now I'm sitting here going, oh, "That's Fantastic Four. Uh, yes, yeah, that's a Marvel property. He's probably not going to be there." <laughs> no, he's he's not there. I, I gave Mike some help on the uh, on the Solomon Grundy, so I'll say you no. Know, Doctor Doom is definitely Marvel. Well, give me one more. Anybody? Any villain? Rever- uh, we'll just go with the Reverse Flash since we talked Flash. Earlier. Does he have another name other than just Reverse Flash? Oh gosh, that's what I can't remember. It, it, it's uh, yeah, the Reverse it's Doctor Flash. something or another, but I'm trying to remember what is. I know that that's right, what I, well, I was blanking on. It. Neither neither one. There's no doctors <laughs> in Reverse Flash. Right, let's that's do the fine. reveal. All right, so number coming in at number five, Bizarro. Yeah. Coming in at number four, Brainiac. Oh, yeah. You ever heard of him, Mike? No, no. 
I, I, I don't like purple with little things all over his head. Come on. And, and you're going to, you're going to want to punch yourself in the, in the, in the nether oh. regions. Was it Groot one, Grodd? No. Number one, oh. Poison Ivy. Oh, Hello. Yeah. Come on. Why, why didn't Catwoman come to mind? Eh, I don't know. All right. So, uh, so, so coming in at number six, Black Adam tied with Gorilla Grodd at number six as well. Sinestro came in uh, after that at number seven. Captain oh. Cold at number eight. Cheetah at number nine and Black Manta at number ten. Everything below that was too small to to count as points. All right, third question: Who is your favorite Avengers villain? Now, not you guys. Our geek right. panel. All right, so Mike, you get to go first again. All right, I am going to say, uh, I'm going to say that everyone's going to say that it is. Um, 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 Oh my God! Now you got me thinking everything on DC, and I've I've pushed all the Marvel stuff out of my head. God damn you! Uh, it's a switch up. I know. The 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 bad, you know, the big. Oh, hold oh, on. Oh come on! Come on, dude. This is even easier. Uh, all right. If, uh, uh, what is his name? The uh, he's big. He's purple. Gal not Galactus. Uh. uh you know, with the whole infinity Thanos, stones and he's Thanos. All right, Thanos. Thanos. That's who he's trying to. Jesus Christ, save us! Third Thank place, you. Mike Thanos. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, man, that was hard. Hey, Mike, keep Thank thinking because you. you got another one. All right, so I know. Terry, Terry, no, because Terry's going to take the one I'm starting. Loki, Loki, Ooh. Loki nice. comes in at oh number one. What? Nice, uh, not my, Terry. He, I like Loki. He's not my favorite, but I do like him, and I understand why people would pick him as number one. Mike, Ultron. Ultron. Hey, he's on the board. Well, good for me. <laughs> All right, Terry. Hmm. Gosh. I'm running out of villains now on the on the Avengers side. Yeah, because it's an Avengers villain. It's not like it's hold just on, let, hold, on, hold on, hold on. Let me remind you guys: when you say Avengers villain, you're almost saying Marvel villain. I know. Again, like the Legion of Doom. Yeah. Everyone yeah. has fought the Avengers. They have fought everybody. But I said Avengers villain because I couldn't just say villain. Because there, there's lines. It, it, it's just better to say that. Because there are people like, well, he was a villain, but let's, now he's a good guy. And let's try Magneto. Magneto. Uh, I'm sorry. He is an Avengers villain, and I can't believe he didn't make the list. He wow. should have. Should Why have. Why did the X Men get such such terrible love? <laughs> I, know. I know. Well, Mike, Mike let's say, do one right, last some... round of this. Pick one. Somebody. Okay. Uh, I'm going to say. Um. Mm, not uh not oh, so doom who, uh, perf oh shoot what is his name it's not dr doom but it's the other guy that has a metal face you know what i'm talking about the other guy that has a metal face uh, yeah. <laughs> there's kang the conqueror he has a metal face no there's uh ultron has a metal face um oh shoot what is his name Damn it, I wish I had my book on me. Um, no. All right, let's go with... When you uh, play Marvel Champions, pick one of them. Okay. Uh, uh, this game is hard, Pete. I know. We're running Sucks out of names that. here, man. Sucks to be uh, on this end of it, doesn't it, Mike? Yeah, it really <laughs> does. It really does. I like my end better. Yeah. <laughs> Your end. Whoever's end. Um, uh, Come on, buddy. God, what is the 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 Galactus? Galactus, all right, thank Jesus Christ. Is that a DC villain? No, Isn't Galactus no, he's a, a DC villain? No, he's no. Marvel. And, okay. and he came in at number six, Mike. Sorry. Shit. Terry, one last time. One last time. All year. right. Here we go. Now I can't remember the name. Oh, from the Guardians of the Galaxy, the guy that was that was the villain in that, and I've forgotten his name. The fir the first one? Yeah. That'd be Ronan the, the Accuser? Thomas. Yeah, that's yeah, it. I couldn't Ronan. remember his name. All right, running the accuser is not on the board. I'm sorry. Hey, All right, let's do the reveal. 
Silver Surfer, is he on there? Uh, not that I would get a point. He's not a villain. I'm just He's not a villain. Not a villain. See, I didn't All know right. that would count as a villain, so okay. It doesn't. So number four, Red Skull. Remember Captain America, First Avenger? <clears throat> anyway. Uh, and then oh, in, yeah, that guy. Yeah, that? Second place. Second place in Terry. Terry, Terry, Terry. Dr. Doom. Oh, man, I totally spaced on Dr. Doom. Yeah, he's like the big. I, he's I don't like, know why. I was yeah. talking about him earlier in my head. Yep, yep, yep. All right. <laughs> last round, last round. Thank God, no. All right. Here we go, Mike. Uh, I'm gonna let Terry go first. Terry, who is your who is who is the geek's favorite Spider-Man villain? If it's not the Hobgoblin, I'm gonna be very surprised. Okay, you ready? Yeah. No! Oh, wow! He tied for sixth place with another guy. I'm gonna wow. say now. Are we going to say I that know, the Green right? Goblin is different than the Hobgoblin? Correct. Yes, you are gonna say that. They're okay. two different people, two wow. different villains. Green Goblin. Green Goblin. Green Goblin is third place. There we go. All right, right, Terry. Venom. Venom. Venom is. Survey says second place. Nice. Very nice. Right. This round. Yes, you guys are killing it now. Now we're yeah, doing yeah. it. Spider Man. Shit. Yeah, all right. well, I'm good. Uh, right. Vulture. Vulture. You know, this is before Spider Man Homecoming. Uh, didn't oh, make well. the board. I'm. I guarantee you, if I did this survey now, yeah. totally be on the board. He is the fucking best movie villain yeah. yet, in my opinion. Yep, that's my opinion. All right, Terry, what do we got? I've drawn a blank. I, I don't have. Really? Any, I don't have any other any other Spider Man villains coming to my mind. I, I, think I got of the movies. one more. I got one more in my the, bank. So think of the movies. The movies made heavy use. All the Spider Man movies made heavy use of yeah. Spider Man's villains. I know they did, and and they were not my favorite movies. So if they I know, exit in my I, head. I'm, I'm afraid serious. I'm just going to have to give it a pass because I just no, can't remember no, Terry, the same one. No, Terry, I'm even going to help you on this one, and you can pick whichever one of these you want. Okay, you got Sandman, you got um, Electro, or yeah, I think it's called yeah, Electro. There was Electro, Sandman. You got uh, Doc Ock. Blue, you got right. Actually, I do remember Doctor Octopus. I, and it was. I've just never been a big Spider-Man fan, so I'm not surprised. Yeah, the lizard guy, lizard man. Yeah. Pick any, any of those you want, man. Doc Ock. It. Okay. Doc Ock. All right, Mike. You're going to kill yourself. Number I know. one. I know. Number one. All right, Mike, I'll give you another. You get one more go. You get the last one. Well, uh, I'm going to have to go with Electro. 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 Ah. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> he's funny. a wait a minute, uh, six, seven... A ninth place down. And I got to tell you, in the movie, ugh, horrible. They did a horrible job uh, with him. All right. So I, I, was, I was avoiding the chat. We, uh, some, uh, Dave said Doc Ock, Rhino, and Electro. Yeah. Uh, Carnage, which is different than um, the no, other that's one. That's different than, yeah, it's different than. Yeah, uh, Lizard, than... Sandrant, oh, Maestro. Oh, what happened? So. Crap. I screwed it up. I'm sorry, guys. I, I scrolled. I should have scrolled. All right, so Dr. Octopus, Venom, uh, Green Goblin was number three, Kingpin. Kingpin Kraven. Yeah. And I forget Kraven the Hunter was number five. Craven. Now you got to remember a lot of yeah. these. A lot of these were must have been comic book readers because uh, you haven't seen Kingpin go up against Spider Man yet. Which in the comics, it's it's a lot. Uh, and Kraven the Hunter, I love Kraven the Hunter. I think he's one of my favorite uh, of the Spider Man villains. He's really cool. All right, yeah. everybody. Well, the Mike. uh it'll be updating in just a second, but uh the score is uh me 17 and Terry 24. Although I think I should get I don't, I don't I don't count that 5 though, so I think you should deduct 5 from mine right now. Make it 19. Okay, you win. <laughs> you still win, but that's fine. You still win. Okay. <laughs> All right, so hold on. Let me uh let me stop sharing this. All right, and Terry, I'll put the screen on you. You get, come on, come on, computer. The tension is killing me. Yes, it's, it's okay. playing now. I don't know why I'm not hearing it. I hope the audience is hearing it. Is everyone hearing the champion music? I feel like I'm walking across the stage uh, right now. Yeah, that, that's our winner music. All right. <laughs> 
well fantastic let me uh let me get this back up here there we go now i can actually see everything yeah when i launched the game i need like another monitor i need like a fourth monitor because when i launch the game it takes up uh it's a it's a powerpoint presentation so i do it on full screen so you guys can see it nice and pretty and the audience can see it nice and pretty but it takes up an entire screen and then i can't see something else that i'm doing because then i got the score which takes up another screen so anyway whatever let me kill that yeah, everyone in the chat room. It's all easy when you're sitting in a chat room just, yeah, I know. just spouting them off. Let me tell you right now. Whoa. Oh, yeah. How do you not know this? No pressure. No pressure at all. <laughs> right. No pressure. The internet at your, at your fingertips. Um, yeah. <laughs> all right, everybody. Well, Terry, thank you for coming on. It's been great. Uh, everybody, go read Terry's books. How many? I didn't ask you this before. Uh, do you, you write, do you write like, like a madman how many how many books do you put out a year i think last year i put out four maybe five that's I've like got, a madman i think yeah. i've got it's either 14 or 15 books out now and i'm wrapping up one as we speak so i've been pretty busy <laughs> i want to be a wow. lot busier so we're speaking yeah. you just won a game and you're wrapping up a book as we speak this week i'll wrap up another book this week he didn't get yeah. my joke Dude, I, I know i got your joke man. i'm just ignoring it just, oh, right well. right because it Jokes are not jokes unless they're funny, Mike. It's, oh, oh, I see. see, right? Yeah, we try to tell oh. jokes. We try to tell jokes, Mike. <laughs> I was <trying laughs> no, that's, to tell a joke. And and, uh, and, you know, and apparently, so Terry, you do this full time, so you you must be doing okay. I mean, you, you must be uh, pumping them out pretty good. Something doing it something, something okay. I've been I've been very blessed in the fact that I actually got some visibility. I don't know if it was the podcast or what set of circumstances came across because there are better writers that are not doing as well as I am through no fault of their own. So I'm just very happy that, that circumstances have broken my way and that my storytelling is getting out to eyes that want to see it. Yeah. You know, it, it's of all the creators I talk to, it's almost always the same thing. You know, it's like, there's nothing to replace hard work, hard work. You, you have to be a hard worker to, and hustle, but at the same time you can be a hard worker and you can hustle and you can have the greatest product ever. And if you don't get lucky, if there isn't like a little bit of luck involved, you could still like never go anywhere with anything that you do. Uh, and they, they always, but, but that luck will never happen if you don't put yourself out there and work hard yeah. at it. So that's true. I so, agree. So good, man. I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad for you. Yep. All right. So everybody make sure you go to Amazon, check out Terry mix and Terry T E R R Y M I X O N. He's the, he'll show right up. Psh, the only Terry mix in there selling books, uh, dead robots, bots with an S society. So D E A D R O B O T S society.com. Uh, and then check out Facebook forward slash groups forward slash DRS podcast and check out his podcast with that other guy, Cooley. And check us out. We were on the Cooley's podcast, not not the Dead Robots, but we were on um, Cooley's podcast while we're talking so much about that. So why haven't you been on our podcast? I, why I, haven't you strong armed Cooley and gotten him to, to get you a slot? You know, we have I, Cooley on. We have Cooley on all the time. He doesn't yeah. extend you know, this favor to I'm, us. I'm a better man than Paul Cooley, so I hereby invite you two to come to the DRS podcast and be guests on our show. Nice. Oh, fantastic. We're it's in, right, Mike? Hey. Yes, yeah. we're in. I'll hey, have to come hey, up with some crazy game, though. You know, it's it's wild. Yeah, I'm going to have to do this. <laughs> ah, maybe <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll come by and bring a game. That's, that's hey, that would be awesome. We'll, we'll be the, you be the host, and we'll just we'll bring, you know, wine and cheese in the game. There you go. Oh, yeah, fantastic. It's, it's, like, it's like bringing – <laughs> All right, fantastic. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. We're totally down. Yeah. All right, let's wrap this bad boy up. Let me go here, and then I will go. No, 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 no. I will go here. Ah, it worked. You've just enjoyed another awesome episode of The Mythwits. I don't know why I sound so surprised. Uh, we're live on I Facebook do. Mondays at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Please ask our guests questions or just banter with the other Mythfits. If you miss our live show, you can always catch the Encore episodes on Facebook or YouTube. And folks, I really apologize. I've been slow on the YouTube getting these videos transferred over. Find us on Facebook and Twitter as Mythwits and check out Mythwits.com. If you don't have time for videos, make sure to subscribe to our podcast via your favorite podcatcher, or you can listen at Mythwits.podbean.com. Do the like, follow, subscribe thing wherever it's appropriate, and make sure to share your favorite episode on social media, maybe it's this one, to help spread Mythwits love over the entire planet. It's nasty, like nasty stink. Anyway, <coughs> Mythwits I, uh, is part of the... 
TSR Podcast Network. Uh, check out TSRPN.com for more cool shows and games and stuff. Uh, Myth Wits is a Creative Commons product. Like and share it in all the places. Just don't edit it, don't sell it, and don't clean your oven with it. Make sure to check out Studio187.com for more cool stuff and join our mailing list. Thanks for everybody for listening. Thanks, everybody. Bleh. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Tell your friends to tune in. And until next week, Mike. Just remember, when you launch something and it goes out of the Earth's atmosphere, it goes out into the space.